Okay, so this phone here with me is the Xiaomi Redmi Go, a phone that cost Rs 9,000 in Nepal and around $80 internationally. And on paper, it seems like a phone that people with basic needs such as texting or calling or like social media or like gaming would use and I think it is made for such users. So let's dig deeper into what this one has to offer. With the looks of this phone, what one can definitely make out is that this is a pretty compact phone. And being made of plastic, it is very light on the hands as well. You will definitely not feel the weight of it while carrying around in your pockets. And the design is what you would expect for this price and you cannot complain either. The back is plain with a camera and a LED flash on the top and the MI branding at the bottom center. Similarly, SIM and memory card trays are on the left while the buttons are on the right. There is a headphone jack at the top and below you will find a micro USB port and a single speaker grill. And that's all, there is nothing much significant to go on talking about the design. But being an affordable device, this one does look and feel better than I expected it to. Talking about expectations, I thought the display would not be good considering the price but it's not that bad. The 5-inch HD display is considerably bright and sharp and even outdoors, it fares considerably well. But keeping the quality aside, this one is not an 18-9 screen so bezels are evident and so are the navigation keys outside the screen. Having said that, it's not something I would complain about. This phone has one of the best displays I have seen so far in a phone of this price range. Talking about price range, the cameras on this phone do justice to it. The pictures from this one has good if not the best colors in good lighting conditions. However, autofocus is a bit slower but that was expected I guess. But what I had not expected was the HDR feature on this one to perform very well but it surprisingly does. Talking about the image quality, the pictures are not sharp and they're not very punchy as well, just decent in both the areas. However, indoors the pictures are not good as you can see from these samples. Nighttime shots are grainy and void of details. As I mentioned earlier, the daytime images are nice and will do a decent job for you. Selfies share the same story, they're not anything to be excited about yet not that bad either. So the entire camera department screamed OK at best at my usage. I think I had underestimated this phone in almost all the aspects as the performance was surprisingly good. All the apps ran pretty well. The only constraint here is the 8GB of RAM which was just not enough for all my apps, otherwise the apps I installed ran pretty well. Light games like Temple Run ran fine but sadly it does not run PUBG which might be disappointing for some. You can play Free Fire in lowest settings though. I know this information does not help much but just putting it out there. Also, as good as this phone performs, the inclusion of an extra GB of RAM would have done a better job but it's not so it's not actually that big of a bummer. Having said that, the lighter version Google apps run like normal apps, take up less space and run a lot like their native apps. I mostly use full version of apps like YouTube instead of their Gore or Light counterparts and face no problems apart from that storage issue. The Redmi Go, as the name suggests, has Android Go based on Android 8.1.0 Oreo. So you get a light experience with this. Talking about the UI, it's very simple to use and to navigate through. And although this is a Xiaomi phone, you won't feel that way because the UI experience is totally different and even better if I might add. The device has a 3000 mAh battery which will last you for a day on normal usage and at the end of the day, you will have to put it on charge. It takes a little over 3 hours to get fully charged and as I said earlier, lasts you for an entire day. Battery draining while on idle was also not an issue. On my tests, it gave me slightly over 4 hours of screen on time, consisting of activities like calling and texting, social media, YouTube and occasional gaming. Since I used this device as my primary for a week or so, I did test the call quality and the people I often talk to complained about the call quality, nothing too serious though. Also, the phone has a dedicated slot for memory expansion for up to 128GB, which is justifiable enough. A feature that I thought was almost certain this phone would not get was adaptive brightness controls, but it did. If I had to judge this phone in one word, it would be worth it, 
uh, wait, that is two words. Anyways, this is a very decent phone to buy for that price, especially in Nepal because there are local manufacturers who offer phones in similar price range, but they do not offer as much as this one does. It gives you a little of everything and I think it is enough for a basic user. However, if you ask me, I would chip in a little extra cash and get the Galaxy M10 because that one offers more value. But if you do not have a penny more than 9000 rupees, then this is a decent phone to buy. So that is all for the review. Tell us what you think about the device in the comment section below. Till then, I am Pratima Adhikari and thank you for watching.